Do you know what a buckle bunny is? I suppose I don't. I mean, it's kind of just the country version of like, can I don't know if I could say ho, but like, it's sure. like a country bumpkin ho, essentially. Okay. All right. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Very, very cool to chat with you. I, I have been following your music for probably about a year now. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a like my personal sort of like country music playlist of songs that are not really mainstream, kind of like left of center sort of stuff. And uh, I have Country Girl Commandments on there. And really? yeah, it's my 10 year old daughter. It's like her- <laughs> She yeah. loves that song so much. Oh, I love and, that. Um, uh, so I've been following your, your music for about a year. Very excited um, about everything that you've got going on. Um, as far as the pop culture crowd, I mean, you'll be a, a new face and voice to to our readers and viewers. So I would love to give you an opportunity to kind of share a little bit about your background growing up in, in you split your time between California and is, was it Wyoming or Montana? Oh, Wyoming. Wow, that's incredible. Yes, I was adopted. So my family comes from, my adopted family comes from Utah and Idaho, Wyoming. And then my mom's side comes kind of from California. She actually did the same thing growing up. Um, She would spend a year in Santa Barbara, California, and then the next year would be in Wyoming. So she had it a little more extreme than I think we did growing up. It was just summers for me in Star Valley. And then the school year was in Manhattan Beach, California. Um, But I think the biggest part of my heart always kind of latched itself to the Star Valley side. Um, And I think you could probably hear that in my music. (laughs) It's very much a blend of those two worlds, but like Star Valley is why I chose country yeah i was describing it to someone as like like um what did i say i said a little it's a little bit like sort of like beach vibes and like a little bit heartland like it's kind of oh i love that it's a real sort of like interesting blend of the two and and i think it's very unique um um uh, if i love fu 150 and uh and I wanted to tell you this, my, so again, my one that my daughter likes too. And I was like, you just like this song because it's like an excuse to say F you. To say F you. <laughs> She's like, yeah. no, I like this song. I'm like, nah, I know. Like, yeah, That's exactly. Cool. Um, but but for you, uh, what was the mo- what's the most important part when you're kind of listening to a song or when you're working on putting a, a track together, when you're when you're writing all that stuff? Do you Do you have a focus on balance? Do you say like, I want to do more of this that's kind of like leans more sort of pop, R&B, hip hop, whatever. I want to do more of this, which leans more country, more bluegrass. Or do you just kind of like find an organic middle? It's very organic. I think, you know, I'm half black, half white. I spent half of my time in California, half of my time in Star Valley. Like I just met my birth family. I have half my birth family, half is my adopted family. I've always been like half of this and half of that. (laughs) And I don't really have to try. I don't really need to try when I'm in the room. I'm not, I'm not thinking at all. Oh, should we like lean towards country or maybe let's lean towards more of a pop sound. Um, I just kind of hear it. And that's just what naturally I tend to do. Everything's just always going to have some sort of country influence because that's just who I am. Fair enough. So it, 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 your music is intrinsically you to the core. Very, very much so. Yes. I would say I've, I've definitely have gotten a strong sense of that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, um, I lost my train of thought there all of a sudden. Um, you have a new single that's going to be coming out. Uh, yes. Buckle Bunny, which is... Yes. Among the the fan base seems to be a very like uh, a highly anticipated song. People have really been eager for it, and there've been teases and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know the song's coming out soon, and I would love to maybe get a little tease on that. Maybe a little like what 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 where does that song come from, and and what can we expect? Well, Buckle Bunny. If you don't know what a Buckle Bunny is, do you know what a Buckle Bunny is? I suppose I don't. I mean, it's kind of just the country version of like, can, I don't know if I could say ho, but like, it's sure. like a country bumpkin ho, essentially. Okay. 
All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's a new term. I, I have heard the song. I have heard the okay. song and okay. I love it. And uh, I think I just thought it was like country playboy bunny. Like, I guess that was kind of in my right. head. Right? I like, mean, that, that is a really so. good way to like kind of put it, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Um, if it's like a country playboy bunny, the buckle bunny is like what people who are judging the playboy bunny would call the playboy oh, country okay. bunny. So, so it's, it's, it's like it's owning the term. Yes. It's been Love like that. kind of a mean word. It's like calling someone a slut or calling someone yeah, a whore. Do do like that. that's what a buckle bunny is in country culture. Okay. And growing up, like I said, half LA, half Star Valley, I never like, like I said, I've always been half and half. I was wearing my rhinestone jeans in Wyoming. We get ready to go to the rodeo and I'm getting my hair done. I'm doing my nails. <laughs> I'm doing my makeup. And there's a lot of country women who enjoy the glam side of yeah. Western wear. Yeah. But there are a lot of people who don't like it so much. Mm -hmm. So going to like a rodeo and stuff, that's you pretty much expect to be called a hussy or a buckle bunny and I was like 16 or 17 the first time someone like called me a buckle bunny at rodeo. And I was like, hmm, okay, like, yeah, that's new. And it probably doesn't help that I'm like in this tiny little town in Star Valley, Wyoming that has one black person and it's me. Well, it has five, me and my siblings. <laughs> like, I get it. I get it. So, yeah, but that's what a buckle bunny is. Wow. Essentially. I, I don't know how I missed that term in my yeah, it's okay. near 40 years on this earth. I somehow okay. it just evaded me. Um, well, I, you know what? Shout out to you for, for <laughs> saying like, we're not going to do this shaming BS. Like we're going to. Yes. I'm very anti slut shaming is like what it is and taking that power back and reclaiming it. Cause it's a cute word. It it's is. so cute. So like, I want it back <laughs> and I took it back. So <laughs> Hell yeah. I don't blame you one bit. I think that's great. Yeah. I, I didn't, I had no concept of it as like a, a slang term. So that's really interesting to find out. Um, um, I'm, I'm deeply fascinated with, with your popularity and how you have like seemingly on, just completely on your own built an incredible fan base. I mean, you have nearly 20 million views, I'm sorry, streams on Spotify, like 2 million followers, regular listeners, like your, your social is blown up. And when I like, when I've done searches for, for you, it's like, there's just so little out there as far as like promotion stuff. So like you have done like grassroots, <laughs> like, like social media work to like build a fan base that is absolutely incredible and something you really thank don't you. see a lot these days thank you that means so much to me thank you so much i the independent musician journey is so difficult and i mean it's really really hard but i think people just want to latch on to something that's real yeah. i think everyone is like craving being real and wants to be themselves. And I've been myself since day one. And I think it's very authentic and people just see yeah. that, yeah. Um, that I'm not trying to be something that I'm not, that I'm always just being myself. And I think it's, it's how I've been able to really connect with what I would say are fans. Yeah. And I think that, that what you touch on there too, is really important authenticity and, and that real recognizes real mentality and, and, and to acknowledge that like, this idea of authenticity, this this smug concept of it has changed a lot over the years. Whereas for a long time, you would get a lot of these sort of like gatekeepers who, you know, especially when it comes to country music, the authenticity was, you know, if you're wearing your, your hat and your boots and you're playing your guitar and you're singing your like very mellow four chord, you know, like... Yes. <laughs> like somehow, somehow that got to be the most sort of like right respected version of all respected. Yes. And it's yes. absolutely ridiculous because because someone like yourself or or artists like Rashad or or uh, uh gosh, I mean there's a number so many people out there. Yeah. What you guys do is also that version of, of country music, that sound is also authentic off authentic. I'll spit it out yeah. eventually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I, you, it's been an uphill battle for you. <laughs> in, yeah, in that <laughs> regard, <laughs> definitely unconventional. Sure, unconventional. So much, so. 
but you found an incredible fan base and you've got a lot of really, really amazing fans. I really do. For the shows and all that stuff. Yes. It was, it's been wild. Um, kind of seeing the progression of things. We had CMA Fest just about a week ago. Yeah, how was that experience? It was so fun. Performing live is my favorite mm. thing ever, period. And um, there was a couple from England who like found out I was playing CMA Fest just like two or three weeks before that. And they worked for British Airways. And so they literally, they were best friends and they just booked tickets to come oh. see me at CMA Fest all the way from London. And I was like, mm. that like, really, it really hit me. Uh, and for the first time I got to see people singing the words oh. and singing it back to me and like knowing, which was just the most amazing. I mean, that's just the most amazing feeling ever to be writing as a kid growing up in my room, just sitting at my piano, super shy. Like my parents would walk in and I'd be like, get out, get out, don't <laughs> and like singing a song that other people actually know the words to that I wrote is like, I mean, it's my dream. That's my dream. <laughs> I, it's yeah. fun, you mentioned that and, and it's funny, I read, I did read like a, an editorial thing that you had written about, about your journey in music and all that and how you used to be very shy and it yeah. wasn't something that was, so it's very, it's fascinating, I think, to see you be such a very out, outgoing and open and you're just in, energetic and you're like just out there on stage doing everything and it's really kind of neat. What was sort of the changing point for you that helped yeah. you be a little bit more open? Yeah. You know, I've always wanted to do this. I always wanted to be a songwriter, a singer, performer. Um, but like I said, so shy, writing something in my room. I would like stop and just stare until they like left the room. And then I would just like pick up back again and start writing. I uh, went to school at Utah Valley University. And there you get assigned a voice coach in the commercial music program, depending on the program you join. And my coach, Nancy Baumgartner, on the first day was like, you have a voice that like, if you wanted to do this, like you could really, really do this. And I was like, I can barely like go to class without throwing up. I can barely <laughs> like make friends. Like I'm like, I, I, it wasn't my choice to be so like nervous and so anxious, um, even though I didn't want to be. And she told me that most artists do have like debilitating stage fright. And Donny Osman was one of those people who's like amazing. I mean, he's amazing, but he overcame extreme stage fright. Wow. And she said it comes with when you are comfortable and know your craft so well that there's nothing to be worried about mm. because the anxiety comes from, Oh, am I not going to be good enough? Oh, what if I mess up? Oh, everyone's going to see me mess up. But over about a year, I worked with my voice coach on getting my voice technically where I wanted it to be. And that, I mean, that was the end of me being shy about being on stage. I'm still very like not super social and like, you know, <laughs> I'm like, I like to stay home, but it created this, what I call is Tanner Adele, which is my first and middle name. Like I'm Tanner, but like that girl on stage, like that's Tanner Adele. That's the girl that like I curated to do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah that makes a lot of sense well god bless nancy because if she wasn't for her doing the lord's work we we wouldn't have tanner seriously <laughs> no yes she's amazing she's still my voice coach today she's awesome. like great she's great she's one of my best friends that's incredible um um new music let me ask you what do you got going on coming up soon you're doing tours doing festivals what's going on so much performing live i'm leaving tomorrow morning we've got two shows this weekend in wisconsin and illinois um, and then the week after, we've got Chicago, Windy City Smoke, or the Smoky City, Windy City Smoky Festival. It's like a okay. barbecue festival. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. so pumped for that. Wow. I love barbecue. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yes. And next Friday, I'm releasing a song called Trailer Park Barbie, which I just teased literally last night. So, like, okay. brand new. Yeah. And that'll be coming out next Friday, which so excited for that as well. Okay, Trailer Park Barbie's coming out soon. Okay, so fans want to be on the lookout for that. And we got the, the concerts you got going on. I mean, so you're, just, you're so busy. I don't want to take up any more of your time because I'm afraid that, like, I'm going <laughs> to 
intrude on something. You got to get out there. You got to get on stage. You got to do a you, all that good stuff. But Tanner, okay. thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate you taking time to chat with us today. Thank you. And, and I'm super excited. Can't wait to hopefully catch a show sometime. 